So this is reading and literature. The access point that I'm measuring is a student's ability to identify differences between two representations of the same text. The less complex task would be identifying similarities. Similarities are much easier than differences. Okay. But I think we're ready to work on differences. So requirements tell me what has to happen. Five unique items that always happens. Two versions of the same story presented in different ways. Must be a story or drama because it's literature. That's it, right? So if I go to the next place, here's my example. This is what's going to make it sense. So one thing to note, all of the English language arts ones have tiny texts with them. There are texts that we vetted with teachers over and over again. Do you have to use them? No. Can you? Yes. So should you like this one and it feels appropriate for your student, you are more than welcome to use it. If you don't, you can absolutely ignore it exists. Okay? But we put them there for you. So this one happens to be the tortoise and the hare. It's great. There's a rabbit. There's a lesson to be learned. It's fantastic. So their teacher directions are here in my example. You're going to listen to a story about a tortoise and a hare, and then you're going to watch a video of the same story. So if you're interested here, we also embedded. Here is Tortoise and the Hare from Tar Heel Reader, which is where we pulled this from. I'm imagining most of our students are not going to listen to even a six-line story. So Tar Heel Reader is a wonderful source of adapted text. So is the Sherlock Center, and I'll post both of those under our resources. So you can go to, this is an illustrated version. There's a couple of graphics and then a line of text. Each one is there. If we pull them from resources, they're posted at the bottom. They're footnoted. Okay. So I would go through, and I would read the story with the student with graphics. And then we put a link into a video. Teacher direction, now we're going to watch a video of the tortoise and the hare. And then you would go through, it's about a seven, it says it's a 72 second video. And it's actually embedded if you really like this. Okay. And you would go through and you could watch the video. So now you would ask the student about differences. So you could ask the student to do a couple of things. So if we're going to identify differences, we could ask the student if they were capable of really just generating a response up front. Can you please tell me five differences? Can you identify five differences? Okay. I correctly identified that the rabbit was different sizes. Incorrectly said, oh, um, and the rabbit loses in one and the rabbit wins in the other. Okay. Correctly did this and that. So you go through here. And the way you can do is you can ask questions. So my student isn't ready to do that independently, but I could say, how is the story different from the video? A, did the rabbit get lost on this one? B, did the rabbit take a nap? C, did the, sorry, the hare stop for lunch? Okay, here are my three questions. How is it different? Here are three items. I could stop and say, how is the hare different? How is the tortoise different? So it gives you guidance here. So you could change the media, the representation. If you don't want to read it and watch a video, you could. There have got to be a million ways to do this. Act it out in a puppet show, use visual cues, watch a video and do a sing-along. I don't know how you could do this. But there are a million different representations that you can work through. Okay, the last part, again, is your adaptations. If you're doing a lot of stories, you could talk about differences across tortoises and hares and then differences across rabbits, rare rabbits, if you're into rabbit stories. And lots of moral lessons with those. Okay. Book and video, video and read aloud, read aloud and acting it out. And there are no restrictions. There are very few restrictions most of the time. Okay. And this gives you guidance and the pieces are here and this is in the back of your book too. So I either would change the stem to change a question or I just change the answer choices. One or the other. Okay. So one of the things that's really important to call out, really important, that performance tasks do not tell you how a student responds to you or how you present the information to the student. They will use a preferred mode of communication. How do you know what they know? However, they would naturally respond to you. Performance tasks, they outline the elements that are necessary to get an accurate measure. They don't tell you what text to use. They don't tell you how to present it in terms of like what are you teaching, where that happens in your day, your time, your lessons, pieces like that. Okay. English language arts is a big one. It does not specify text type. It does say this must be a story because it is reading literature, but I won't tell you what the story is. 